It's another privilege to come before you again to bring you the word of the Lord. I want to thank the leadership of the church. I want to thank, first and foremost, Almighty God for this great privilege to bring you the word again. I want to thank the pastor, the elders, and every one of you for giving me this privilege to bring you the word. I do not take this opportunity for granted. I don't take it for um, as a thing that I, I deserve. No, it's a privilege and I treat it as that as well. Thank you. This morning we'll be talking about the coming of the king. We are in the period of Advent, seasons of Advent. We're talking about the coming of the king. Many a times people talk about Christmas. They talk about the gifts they'll be exchanging, the lovely Christmas talkie and um, Christmas dinner afterwards, um, the clothes. As a grown child, it does not matter how many times your parents buy you clothes in the year or give you gifts in the year. If you do not get something for Christmas, you know you've been bad. They do not like you. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. So it's expectant that every child, as a child, I just know I must get something for Christmas. And as I grew up, I still feel the same way. And until date, I still feel the same way that I must get something for Christmas. It's a must, whether physically or not. Jesus came at Christmas, and there's no gift greater or better than that for any of us. Amen. So it's important you have this expectation that this coming, this um, come this Christmas, you will get a gift far, far, far better than every gift you've gone before, you've gotten before. Amen. I'd like you to turn your Bible with me to Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Revelations 1, verse 8, please. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. Father, this is the session of the word. We ask that you breathe upon your word. Holy Spirit, glorify Jesus via the spoken word today. Holy Spirit, through the spoken word, meet each and every one here present today at the points of their needs. And Lord, we ask that through the transmission via online, you will meet each and every one that, has, that is hearing the sound of my voice today at the point of their needs in the name of Jesus that the gift of Christmas, the greatest gift of all, be received by everyone that hears me, whether presently here or through the transmission in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Christmas is a period where we exchange gifts, like I said, and for some of us, Christmas do not really mean much anymore because we've seen several. If you've done Christmas several times, we are not too expectant of the gifts. We get used to Christmas cards. You get used to um, the Christmas turkey or duck. Like some will say, they don't want turkey anymore. We had too much turkey. We want ducklings. We want duck this time around. Oh, I want just chicken. You get so used to that because you've got, gone through several Christmases on, while you're on earth. 
But Christmas, it's not just about the food, the physical thing. It's more the spiritual. But a lot of emphasis is placed on the, on the physical, what we can see, the aesthetic and the beautification of the church or the streets, the lightings and everything. Advent is a season anticipating the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ in three different perspectives. First, it was Jesus will come as the Messiah into history. Second perspective is that Jesus is coming into our lives and into our hearts. And the third perspective of Advent is that it alerts us of his second coming as the king of kings. Amen. So Advent itself has three parts, the past, the present, and the future. We'll be looking at those three parts just briefly because of time so that we can get to do other things today. Messiah coming into history, his first coming, which is what we're looking forward to, which is Christmas, the Christmas itself. Around 700 years ago before Jesus was born, prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 says, a virgin will conceive. A virgin without a man will conceive and give birth to a child. They shall call his name Emmanuel. Same Isaiah 6, um, Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And it went forward to say of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the question is, how can this thing be? The prophecy says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall perform this. And this prophecy was fulfilled when Jesus was born in Luke, the story of Luke chapter 1, verse 26 up to, 20, uh, to 34. That was the first Christmas. Jesus says, The, sorry, Isaiah said he is coming and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And in Luke, he was called, his name shall be called Jesus, that is Savior, for he will save his people from their sins. That Isaiah said, he, one of his names is that he is the prince of peace. If there's any time we needed peace in this world, this is the time we needed peace than ever before. If there's any time we want peace in this earth, there is no time better than now. Some would argue that since 9-11, the world had just been one problem or the other. You know, since 9-11, there had been tensions, heightened tensions amongst nations, religious tension, faith, people, nations fighting against nations. There had been issues of tsunamis, earthquakes, global warming, name it. COVID-19 and everything is making the whole world worry and stress. It seems there is no peace anywhere anymore. But we thank God that when Jesus came, 
peace came into existence. Peace came into place. He says, there is no peace in any other except in Jesus. Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 16, verse 33, he says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have troubles. But take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. There is no peace in any other except in Jesus. Now people say, you Christians are too cocksure of yourself. How can you say there is no peace in others? Are you saying people who do not know Jesus don't have peace? Yes, I'm saying that. If you do not have Jesus, you cannot experience the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Amen. Jesus himself says in John 14, 27, he says, peace I give to you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. So there's a peace the world have that is not like the one of Jesus Christ. Amen. You cannot experience Jesus' peace except you are associated or you are in line with him or you come to him or you accept him as your Lord and Savior. He says, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Do not let your heart be troubled and be not afraid because I've given you my own peace. In the midst of the storm, we've seen Jesus, a perfect example, when there are problems everywhere, storms raging and things, people are panicking. The guy lay down quietly in the bed, looking on the pillow, lying. People were frightened and says, when they woke him up, Master, care us that we perish. He got up and just rebuked the wind and said, Peace be still. Because he is the master, the Lord of peace. When he said, Peace be still, situations get still. Amen. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. If there's any gifts you are expecting in this Christmas, Please make Jesus your first on the list for your gift for Christmas. And you will experience and enjoy his peace. Amen. When he was to go, he told us not to worry that he's got to go away. But when he's away, he's going to prepare for us a place. When he has finished preparing that place, he will come and take us back to himself. For where he is, there will be also. This account was in John 14, verse 1 to 3. I'm going to just read some aspect of that. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in me also. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He says, I go to prepare for you a place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to me, take you to be with me, that where I am, there you will be also. So if God tells you, if Jesus tells you, he's going to prepare for you a place and he will prepare and come and take us, be rest assured that he will come. You know, when I read this scripture, one thing that keeps baffling me or that I struggle to think about, that struggle to understand or comprehend was the fact that, look at the whole earth. This song we sang this morning says, indescribable. If you watch the video of that song, indescribable, you see the planetary system, how beautiful they are, how massive some of them are, and the earth where we live is just like a dot in the planetary system. How beautiful. If you watch the blue planet, you see how beautiful creatures are in the sea, how magnificent things are all over the planet. The baffling thought was if it took God only six days to do all these beautiful things, awesome work, 
in six days. Can you imagine how glorious, how beautiful, how fantastic it will be for the thing Jesus, God, had gone to prepare for over 2,000 years? No. Just imagine it. Six days for the beauty you can see here now. It took six days. And when God finished that six days in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, God says, it, and it was beautiful, very, very good. God said, he, he looked at what he is created and says, it was very good. Can you now imagine what God has been preparing for you and I that believe in him for over 2,000 years? How can we, you know, I try to think about it. I can't. I could only imagine how precious, how beautiful. You know, Scripture says in Revelation 21, gave us the forties of what that area, that place would be like. He says the streets are paved with gold. Amen. He says the walls are, was built of jasper. The streets paved with gold. Clear gold that looks like glass. You know, he says there will be no pain there. No crying. In that city, in that place, God has gone to prepare for us. And there will be, above all, there is no death. No one will be sick. No one will have pain. No one will die when you get to that city, to God's presence. You know, every time I, I the moment I read the scriptures, and I'm thinking, if it took God six days to prepare this earth, and he's gone for more than 2,000 years preparing a place where he will want us to be with him forever. And understand there's no dying there. No sickness there. No tears. Why? Because there's even no night or day. We'll just be rejoicing, be dancing, be worshiping in his presence. There's No sadness. In Revelation 19, verse 6 to 9, I will just skip one thing. It says, if there is going to be a party, there can never be any party as great or grand as this party. His second coming, when he comes the second time and takes us to himself, we will be celebrating and celebrating. It will be the greatest party ever. Why? He says, because... The angel says to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the author of Revelations, Brother John, he says, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Blessed are these people that will be invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Why? Because there, there will be no tears, no weeping, no crying, no pain, no death, like we've said earlier on. The glory of the Lord will be there for everyone. You'll be experiencing God's presence continually, nonstop. If you can make it to that place, if you get an invite, know you are blessed. And how, what do we do to get the invite is the question now. So it's a place to desire, it's a place to want to be. What can we do to get an invite? We know we serve a God that cannot lie. We know we serve a God that does not change. He says, if you will knock, seek, ask, you will get an answer. He says, if only you will ask him, Lord, 
I want you in my life. He will accept you. He says to everyone that asketh, to everyone that seeks, to everyone that knocketh, the door shall be open. If you ask, you will get an answer. If you seek, you will find. Jesus is saying, if you will ask me to be the Lord of your life, instead of asking me for a bouquet or asking me for physical healing or asking me for material things, ask me to come into your life and be your Lord and I will come and take over your life. Amen. There are things we need to ask. Some of us, if you, have, if you give people opportunity to ask, they will ask for physical things. I want to have, some will say, they're asking God to give them, uh, let them win the lottery. Let them have millions of pounds. There are people that had those millions of pounds and they are wallowing in misery. So money is not the answer. Jesus is the answer. For this Christmas, if you will ask him, he says, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. If anyone will hear me and open, I will come in. He's always knocking. Right now, he's still knocking. He wants you to Ask him to come in. He will not force himself into your heart, into your life, into your homes. If you invite him, he will come in and serve with you. After Pentecost, Peter stood up and said in Acts chapter 14, verse, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other except in Jesus Christ. There is no salvation in any except in Jesus. No name that is given under the heavens by which man might be saved except in the name Jesus. This Jesus is asking you now. He says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. It doesn't matter how long you've been coming to church. It doesn't matter what post you have in the church. It doesn't matter even if you were born into the church, confirmed in a church, and you've been in the church all your life. You can be in church for more than 50, 60, 70 years or 10 or 5 or 3 years, and yet you're not born again. It's not worth it. It is a relationship with God that makes the difference. An encounter, one encounter with Jesus is what matters. The Bible says on the last day of the great feast, Jesus stood and said with a loud voice, he cried out and says, let everyone that thirsts come. If you do not desire it, if you do not thirst after him, you will not get filled. The woman at the well wanted the physical water. But Jesus gave her the water that matters. Amen. Amen. He's calling to you this morning, uh, this afternoon, rather. Or maybe those of you watching at home, Jesus is speaking to you now that the greatest gift you can get for this Christmas will be him. Every other gifts are good, but none of them is as good as him, Jesus himself. And for those of us who had received this gift, which you count it a great privilege to have received it, to have known Jesus, and be grateful for it. 
continually be, being grateful. Sometimes you get to work with God and you get, you know, familiarity, they say, brings content. You, you've known the person for so long. Be grateful for what you get. Be thankful. And for those who have not known him, this is the greatest opportunity for you to ask him to come into your life. You cannot be doing the same thing continually and expect a different result. I'd like us to bow our heads and I'm going to ask to pray for some specific persons or God will want to speak or touch some specific people this, morning, um, this afternoon. The Advent season is anticipating the coming of the Lord in three different dimensions. One as the Messiah in history, Messiah that is coming into our lives and into our hearts and the soon coming king. Of all these three, the most important one is that he comes into your life to be your Lord and your savior. If you had not known Jesus as your Lord and personal savior, he says, behold, Jesus talking, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. Would you let him in this morning? If you want to let Jesus into your heart this morning as your Lord and as your personal Savior, I will not ask you to get up and come over. No, no, we are not making an open spectacle. Just wherever you are, just lift up your hands, all heads bow, all eyes closed, and we will pray a prayer of faith with you. All we just want you to do, wherever you are, just lift up your hands. If I see the hands, I'll tell you, I've seen your hand, put it down, and we'll pray with you. It's important you get this gift of Jesus. It's the greatest gift in Christmas, gift of salvation. Oh, peradventure, you've known this Jesus before, and you know now that if he comes, you might not make the invite to the Greatest party of all, of his second coming. You will not make it. You can, restore, you can get restored now. I'd like you to just raise your hand. If I see the hand, I'll tell you to put it down and I'll pray with the whole. All heads bow, all eyes closed, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. And for those that are watching online, You can just, in faith, lift your hands. The Lord that you responded to see your hand. I like you guys, just a few that raised your hands and put it down to say after me, Lord Jesus, I identify I'm a sinner. I ask that you come into my life, take over my life. I confess my sin. I surrender at your foot today. I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I receive the greatest gift of all, Christmas. The gift of you, Jesus, in my life. Thank you for this gift. Amen. Father, we thank you for the session of your word. Lord, let the gift of Christmas that you've given, even the gifts of salvation that you've bestowed on these brethren and those watching at home, Lord, would you, by your grace, preserve them till your coming, that none of these ones, you say, all that the Lord has given me, have kept, Lord, that that scriptures will be fulfilled in the lives of this one that have declared and accepted you today, that you will keep to the coming till your coming, and none of them will fall, up, fall away from grace. 
We ask with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you, cause his grace and his favor to be upon you. Amen.